Sunday school. Amen. 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 That we resort to reprobate and lie spirit, giving me what I want in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to say, Sir, this time is not a power. This time is not a power. Whether they are laying there in the hospital watching this from their hospital bed, I send the power of healing to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up by the world, so shall your life be there in the body of Jesus. So shall you live and overcome your life in the body of Jesus. Spiritually and physically in the name of Jesus. That the doings and the things of God in your life shall manifest in the physical. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Go down and so. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Mighty Jehovah, we thank you for yet another wonderful day that you have made. Father God, we thank you for the privilege to be in your presence, to be in your house, to be alive. Mighty Jehovah, it is only you that can make it possible. We say, hallowed be thy name. My Father and my God, we have come to hear you speak to us because this is the only place where we receive strength. Mighty Jehovah, we pray you strengthen us with your word. Mighty Jehovah, we pray you give us the spirit of obedience to your word. Mighty Jehovah, we pray that we trust and obey you, Lord. King of glory, Lord of Lord, we come against every thief, spiritual thief, that we want to steal from us this morning. You cannot operate in this place because this is miracle arena in the name of Jesus. Mighty Jehovah, we pray. You teach us this morning. Holy Spirit, you are the greatest teacher. Come and teach us this morning in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today is October 22, tenth month of the year. The Lord has been too faithful. Amen. 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 Is the Lord not faithful? He is too faithful. Today, our Sunday school lesson is coming from page. 115 of the manual. And our topic this morning is take heed. Take heed. It's a warning. Take heed lesson. Take heed lessons. It's a warning. It's a warning lesson for every one of us. Amen. Take heed lessons from Samson's life. And our central thought this morning is perfect accomplishment only comes through full obedience to God, not partial. Full not 99.999 100% full obedience to God. Amen. Praise God. And our text this morning is taken from the book of Judges. Book of Judges chapter 13 from verse 1 to 25. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 11 to 14. Amen. If you are there, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody please help me read? And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. Amen. The children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord 
And the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. You can imagine what sin, what evil can lead one into. 40 years into the hands of their enemies, the Philistines. Amen. And there was a certain man of Zora, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou hast conceived, and bare a son. Amen. Most of all these barren women in the Bible, the Lord usually preserved their womb for something miraculous. Amen. Like Jesus. Jesus, the womb virgin, didn't know of any man reserved for Jesus. Look at Elizabeth. She was barren and the Lord used her womb for John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ. Amen. So the Lord has appeared to this woman that has been barren. Continue. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou, hast, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Amen. God reserved her womb for a child, a Nazareth, that will deliver, that will begin the deliverance of the children of Israelites from the hands of the Philistines. Amen. The Lord appeared to the mother and said, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Amen. Jesus Christ was a Nazarite. A Nazarite. Amen. The Lord spoke, appeared to Mary. And spoke to her in the manner she had spoken to the mother of Samson. Amen. And gave her instructions. Amen. Brethren, most of us, we find it difficult to follow instruction. If we cannot follow instruction, God cannot work with us. Because God is a God of instructions. Amen. Praise the Lord. Continue. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he, told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now shall drink no wine, no strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. Amen. Instruction. The wife of Manoah told the husband, that a man of God appeared to me and this is the message he gave to me verse 8 then Manoah entreated the Lord and said oh my Lord let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that thou shalt that 
unto the child that shall be born. Amen. The husband wasn't there when the angel appeared to her. But he prayed. God answers prayers. Are we ready to pray? He prayed and he asked God, please let this man, let this angel that appeared unto my wife in my absence, let him come again and speak to us how to take care of this child that you have said my wife will conceive and give birth to. Amen. They need more instruction. Amen. And God, Verse 9. And God, God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Amen. God answers prayers. We don't pray. That's our own. We don't pray. God is interested in everything. No matter how small. No matter how minute. He is interested. All we need to do is to pray. He prayed. And God answered. Amen. Continue. Verse 10. And the woman made haste and ran and shewed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And yes. He wasn't there when he appeared again the second time. The woman ran and called the husband. And the husband came. Amen. Continue. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that speaketh unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may let her beware. Brethren, beware. Take heed. Even the mother of the child had to take heed. She has to beware so that what God has spoken will come to pass in the life of the child. Amen. Brethren, are you taking heed? Amen. Praise the Lord. She may not eat of anything that cometh to the, of the vine, neither let her drink wine nor strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall make a real kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if Thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. Amen. The Lord, the angel, the Lord sent the angel and he gave instructions. She told the woman, the mother of Samson, what to eat and what not to eat. Brethren, are we obedient to instructions? Are we obedient to the word of God? Amen. Even when the angel have spoken, Manorah did not know it's an angel. He felt it's a man. Okay, hold on. Let's get you something to eat. Heart of giving. And the angel said, even if you get me something, I'm not going to eat it. Amen. That was when he realized he was an angel and not a man. Praise the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That I that when thy sins come to pass, we may be we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name? Seeing it is a secret. Amen. Manoah still wanted to know his name who he was so that when he, what, what he has spoken comes to pass he can reach out to him and he said why are you asking I just gave you a secret amen praise the Lord 
so Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. And it came to pass, when the flame went up towards heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. Amen. Even the offering, he gave a good offering, a good bond offering. Immediately he offered it. The miraculous happened. Amen. Like that of Abel. Praise the Lord. You don't just give God anything. Praise God. If you give God a corrupt offering, he won't even take it from you. Praise God. The angel of the Lord had to ride in that flame. They were watching. That was when they knew exactly that it was an angel that has appeared unto them. Amen. Praise the Lord. And they worshiped God because they saw that God has received their offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. Amen. He knew it was the angel of the Lord, not man. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God. We shall surely die because we have seen God as far as they are concerned. Once you see God, you will die. Amen. You are done. Verse 23, listen to what the wife said. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, as is this time, have told us such things as these. Amen. The wife told the husband, If he is not pleased with us, if he is to, if he will kill us, he will not accept our offerings. Amen. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Amen. Mm. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew. And the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Gan between Zorah and Esther. Amen. Samson's mother kept every instructions to the letter. And when Samson, when he bore Samson, the spirit of the Lord began to move in him at the times in the camp of Dan between Zora and Exal. Amen. If he did not keep the instructions, it wouldn't have come to pass. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's very important, brethren, as believers, let's keep to instructions. Let's be obedient to the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Our next text is 1 Corinthians. 10. to 14. If you are there, shout hallelujah. Amen. Verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples and they are written in our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come verse 12 wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall amen the lord is talking to me and you don't think you have arrived don't think because i'm a pastor i'm a bishop I'm a child of God. I have arrived. 
take heed because you can fall. Amen. Amen. Even Samson, a Nazarite, like Jesus, he fell. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 13. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Amen. Praise the Lord. God will always make a route of escape. There is no temptation whatsoever that you will go through that God is not able to make a way for you. God will always give you a temptation that he knows you can handle. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Therefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Idolatry. Flee from it. Any form of idol worshiping. Flee from it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Introduction. To take heed is to pay careful attention to somebody's advice or warning. Somebody's advice or warning. Take heed. Pay attention. The church has been warning. Pay attention. Amen. To listen and obey or to take instructions given to someone either as a sign of respect to the one advising or a safeguard or corrective measure to the one advised. Amen. We have to take heed. We have to appreciate cor correction. It's for our own good. Nobody will want to talk you down. Anybody correcting you is for your own good. We have to be careful. We have to pay attention, more especially if it's coming from the altar. We are not, God will not target any human being. He's just giving out the word so that we will be corrected, so that we will amend our ways. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are no doubt in perilous times. The love of many is waxing cold. We all know the times and season we are in perilous times with what is happening. What is happening right now has never, never happened before. Formerly, all these gay, you know, they hide. They don't come out. But now, it's in the open. Even when a child is born now, the sex, male or female, is left blank so that when the child grows up, he or she will decide whether I want to be a male or a female, it's perilous times. Amen. It's terrible. The Holy Scriptures are able to save, secure, and preserve us unto the day of Christ's appearing. Even as the Lord Jesus prayed in John 17, 17. Sanctify them by the truth. They were, their word is the truth. It therefore pay, pays to take heed to biblical counsel and truth, lest we shall fall. Amen. We fall away. Truth. It is only the truth that will set you free. Jesus Christ himself is the truth. And he is the life. Amen. Amen. Without the truth, it's like you lying to yourself. Truth is light. Wherever truth comes, it's like if darkness is there, you know, when light comes, darkness will disappear. Truth will set you free. Without the truth, there will be no revelation. Without the truth, you can't even hear God. The word of God is truth. How often do you dedicate yourself and meditate on the truth, the truth, the word of God? Do we take heed? Do we take advice? 
do we accept rebuke? Rebuke is a pill. Swallow it and take correction. It's for your soul. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In this lesson, we would examine the life of Samson, which did not end well because he did not take heed to godly counsel. Nobody is infallible. Hence, every believer should take heed lest he fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Amen. Amen. Every believer, irrespective of your title, you have to be careful. Nobody has arrived until we make it to the feet of Jesus. That's when we know that we have arrived. But right now, we are all sojourners. We are fallible. Anything can happen. You can prophesy today. This minute, the next minute, you are out. Look at Peter. Look at Peter as close as he was to Jesus. He said, Lord, anywhere you go, I will not. I will do everything. I love you. But when temptation came, he denied him. Even when Jesus told him, before the cock crows three times, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He said, never. No, not me. But it happened. Temptation came and he fell. Amen. Praise the Lord. He denied Jesus three times before the cock crew. Lesson objectives to understand the following. Who the man Samson was. Two, how he lived his life and the extent of his successes and failure. Three, the factors which led to his successes stroke failure. Four, possible warnings and encouragements from his lifestyle if any amen if we don't learn anything from this topic the life of Samson then we have ourselves to be blamed amen praise the Lord question one who was Samson Samson was a child of promise the son of Manoah from Zorah in the family of the Danites. Samson was made a Nazarite from the womb as a boy set apart to God from birth who would drink no wine or strong drink nor eat any unclean thing. No razor was to come, to come upon his head while his God-ordained mission was to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Judges 13, 45. Amen. Amen. Samson, a promised child. The mother, the parents, they kept to their own instructions. That was why he was born a Nazarite. Amen. Praise the Lord. A promised child from the womb. Praise God. We have already read Judges 1 to 25. When you get back home, make sure you read all this topic, each question, and read all the Bible passages. Amen. Praise the Lord. And no razor, no razor whatsoever was to come upon his head while his God ordained mission was to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Amen. Praise the Lord. No razor. He knew. Question two, what parallel can believers draw from the Lord's instructions about Samson's life? God has called us out of darkness and bestowed on us the duty of bringing men back to himself. God has called me and you to bring back men to him. The lost, we are talking about evangelism, is the heartbeat of God. We are here reading about something. What are we doing about evangelism? 
What are we doing about winning souls? We are here feeling that Samson did not take heed. Are we taking heed? It's a question for me and you. Are you evangelizing within your neighborhood, in your place of work? Are you living a life that is worthy for people to listen to you within your neighborhood or at work? If you are quarrelsome at work, if you are disobedient at work, you cannot hand track to anybody. I will not even take that track from you. Because our lives is like a mirror to people we evangelize to, to people we talk to about Jesus. When we come out of sin and cleave to God in righteousness, he receives us gives us all we need and expects us to bring forth our kinds for him with the much he endowed us with amen Andrew when he was called he went out to look for his brother James the Lord has called me and you who have you gone out to evangelize who have you followed up who have you brought to the Lord are we taking heed? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a lesson for me and you. God is talking to me and you. Look at all the seats. Look at all the empty seats. Operation Andrew. Go get somebody. Yes. Languishing out there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are here rebuking Samson. Let us rebuke ourselves first. Praise God. We are saved to serve. Serving him is not only an area of praying, parting with our belongings for him, but also in laboring for him in his vineyard and bringing sinners to him for salvation. Amen. Evangelism is the heart beat of God. God doesn't want souls to perish. People have to go out there to talk to them. People have to encourage them. People have to bring them. You have to. Me and you, we all have to labor for the kingdom. Praise the Lord. The kingdom work is a package. You have to pray. You have to work for the Lord. You have to go out there and bring souls. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is only achievable by faith through our godly living and labor of love. As Samson was meant to save or deliver the Israelites from the bondage of the Philistines, so the present day believers are supposed to be spiritually minded and busy rescuing the unsaved from the sinful enslavement by Satan. Amen. Amen. Samson was to deliver Israel from the Philistines that God has handed over to for 40 years. But ours is to go out there and get the unsaved. Some of them will be there languishing. We are talking about 40 years. Some of them will be there languishing for years. Let us go out there and talk to them. Let us go out there and encourage them. Let us go out there and minister to them. Let us go out there and bring them to the Lord. That is what God expects from us as a believer. It's not only us sitting down and enjoying the messages. Let's go out there and bring them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Question. What question are we? Are you sure it's three? Okay. Question three. Discuss how the following led to Samson's fall and the possible lesson for us. God expressly warns those who think they are strong in the Lord to take heed or else they fall. We should therefore be careful watching in prayers and righteousness 
as we walk daily. Some of the factors that led to Samson's fall include these. 1. Lust. Judges 14, 1 through 2, Genesis 3, 6, 24, 3, 28, 1, Deut- Deuteronomy 7, 3, Joshua 23, 12, Ezra 13, 12, Nehemiah 13, 25. Amen. We are talking about what led Samson to fall. In Genesis chapter 24, verse 3, we all read about Eliezer, the servant of Abraham. It's in our Sunday school manual. We read it here. When Abraham appealed to his trusted servant, Eliezer, to promise him that he will not get a wife for his son Isaac from the Canaanite women he promised he even asked him to swear amen that is how important it is for you believers not to marry unbelievers praise the Lord and what led to the fall of Samson is that he didn't listen he didn't take heed amen Thank God Eliezer, the trusted servant of Abraham, did everything that his master instructed him. And he was able to get him a wife, Rebecca. Amen. From his kindred. Praise the Lord. And also in Genesis 28, verse 1, Isaac charged his son Jacob not to marry the Canaanite women. Amen. We all know the story. Jacob, he asked him, he even instructed him where to go. Go to my kindred, the house of Laban. He went there. He served Laban for seven years and they gave him the wrong wife. He decided to serve more years to get the wife he wanted, which he did. Amen. And he was able to get from Rebecca's kindred. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Samson did not listen. Continue. God commanded that believers should not marry unbelievers. Samson was carried away by his fleshly desire that he ignored this injunction. Mm. Not long after his wrong choice, he discovered the fact that no unconverted person is good enough. We must not lust after their cosmetic beauty, respect, or humility. Their ways cannot endure long. One evil discovered in them can negate all the good qualities we tend to have seen and can be very poisonous and devastating to mankind. Amen. Can somebody read Proverbs 31 verse 30? Proverbs 31 verse 30. First. All that glitters is not gold see all these women with their eyelashes that is like flashlight looking at you you will fall for them no they are demons incarnate 90% of them are demon incarnate amen read proverb 31 30 charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised amen Beauty is deceitful. It's only the woman that fears the Lord. That is the beauty. Not facial beauty. Inward beauty. Amen. Men, women, let us be careful. Praise the Lord. Two, disobedience. Judges 14.3 even when Samson's parents 
counseled, counseled him in line with godly marriage injunction against taking a Philistine unbeliever to wife as a Nazarite, he refused to retrieve his steps. He rather become neck deep, not minding the Bible teachings and his parents' disagreement. In desperation, he married contrary to God's perfect will, simply because Delilah pleased him much. Amen. Delilah pleased him much because Delilah is like, she's so pretty. She's like, you know, all over him. Even when the parents warned him, he refused to heed to instruction. Amen. Brethren, let us be careful. Let us listen to advice. Let us listen to instruction. Let us not get caught up. That's why we have to continue to be meditating in the word of God. Most of us will sit down on the TV, glued to the TV, watching every movie. Watching every movie, even the ones that, you know, under normal circumstances, as a believer, you are not supposed to watch. Because you are seated there, you will be watching. It's not good. Whatever you watch, your eyes, it gets directly into your spirit. All those nude movies, nude women, it gets into your spirit. And in your mind, you start, something will start. Yes, please, brethren, look at Samson, a Nazarite. Jesus was a Nazarite. Jesus was the truth. Look at Samson. He rejected the truth. Even when his parents had advised him, his parents have taught him about not marrying a Philistine woman. Look at all the other men in the Bible. Look at Isaac. Look at Abraham. The made sure that their children did not marry the Canaanite women where they lived. But Samson did the contrary. At the end of the day, it was a big fall. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we read Judges 6.1? Can somebody just read Judges 6.1? In desperation. Judges 6 1. One day Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. A prostitute! A man of God, spirit filled, a Nazarite, saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. Went in and defiled himself to spend the night with a prostitute, it will never be a portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because of these women, most of them, they go out with their charms. They seek all this medium. They want people. They want to capture people. Like the one pastor talked about. A woman killing a man's wife and his son to get his husband. That's demon. That's demon, not human. Amen. Can you imagine? Some sin in Nazareth. Sleeping with a prostitute. Over the night. You can imagine all the demons he has acquired. Yes. Praise the Lord. It will never be a portion. It will never be the portion of our children. Our grandchildren. In the name of Jesus, of this ministry, it will never be a portion. In the name of Jesus, take heed. Let's meditate on the word of God. If you are meditating on the word of God, you won't look at all those women out there. Even women, you won't look at all those men. Amen. And once you fix your heart, moreover, if you are single, you've seen a prostitute, you want that prostitute. Even if they are telling you, you will say, yes, the Lord spoke. It's the devil that spoke. Amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Vinny. I've been reading this and studying it. You notice 
that the disobedience was in so many areas of his life. And for example, when he was on the on the pathway and he and he kills the lion. He was. he was on the path when he was walking. He killed the lion and ripped it in half. But he, it, the Bible said he didn't tell his parents about that. Yes. And I was wondering, I was like, why you had such a miracle? How can you not go tell your parents? And then it dawned on me because he was on his way doing disobedient things. So he had to hide it from them. Yes. And disobedience uh, bred into also um, ca carelessness and lying. Yes. Because when he came back, he gave his father uh, that, some of the that honey. Yes. So now yes. that you're disobedient, yes. but now you take it from back in those days was considered to be a dirty unclean thing yes. to remove unclean. something yes. and you give it to your father who you know is a holy man mm -hmm. so a carelessness so one thing kept breeding to another and to mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. all sin leads to death yes no matter See, who we are and even a called child of god is, is that amen and this sin once you start one sin from one sin to another it's like lying once you start lying, you have to lie to cover lie to cover lie to cover lie. Why lie? Speak the truth and you'll set yourself free. Instead of trying to think what lie can I use to cover this lie? It's like sin. Once you start, you keep dipping your neck. Deep down, you will keep going and going. Amen? Praise the Lord. We have to take heed. We have to be careful. Amen? Praise the Lord. Three, carelessness. Judges 14, 8 through 9. As believers, a very little unguided moment could negate all we have lived for. We must therefore guide the thoughts we harbor in our hearts as it is the battlefield against our faith. A little leaven a little leaven the whole the whole lump if we listen to god and obey he will always make a way of escape for us to remain standing in faith samson lived a careless life not minding who he was once he found himself on delilah's lap anything was good enough for him that's terrible. Amen. That is terrible. Carelessness. Brethren, let us not be careless with our lives. Let us not be careless. Like men, women, you will see a strange woman. You will go into her, not knowing that he or she has AIDS or all these diseases all over the place. How many seconds enjoyment you will inflict yourself for life. Maybe you'll get back home and inflict the poor woman or the poor man at home. That is terrible. Everything you labored in life will be gone. Amen? That is terrible. That is terrible. We have to be careful. Let us not be careless with our lives. Our life means so much to God. We cannot just throw it in the dustbin for nothing, for peanuts. Amen? Look at Samson. Immediately he saw the prostitute, he slept with her. Do you know what she used? Most women, they used means. They usually use means to get their, their, their victims. Even men too, they use means to get their victim. Yes, by the time they use it, you can't leave them. So why start in the first place? Don't start, that's the men, the men. Once you start, ah, let me go one more time. One more time, and you will be hooked. That was what happened to Samson. Slept with her overnight, and he became hooked. Even when the parents we are talking doesn't care. When you don't listen to your parents, who will you listen to? Who? Not to talk of God. That's terrible, brother Vinny. It was such a careless night of life also bred into foolishness because you see that he doesn't learn from his lessons he should know how the philistine women were because he he, he shared a, um, a secret with the first philistine wife he shared with her you know the, the message it was like a riddle that he did and she turned on him and told the riddle and 
they, they figured it out and it cost him uh, like a year's worth of clothes or something like that. Then again, because of your carelessness, now you tell the enemy again what your secret is and this time it cost him his life. So when you, when you, when you, when you leave, uh, lead a careless, disobedient, lustful life, you also become foolish. You don't think about what you're doing. And that was when was his demise, one of the many. Amen. When you are careless, when you are careless, anything goes. You let out your secrets. You hand over your life to your enemy. That is terrible. That is exactly what Samson did. Yeah. Why? Because Delilah, all these prostitutes, they know how to get their prey. They know how to. Amen. Praise the Lord. They go out of their way to do stuff. And the men they, they had gotten hold of, we say, ah, my wife can, don't do this to me. If this woman can, why can't I? That's demon. Heading for destruction. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Four. Uncontrolled appetite. Habits. I just wanted to add to during um, workers training pastor had said that um, for something to manifest in the physical it's already taking place in the spirit yes. in this um, example Samson was already blinded in the yes. spirit yes. you know how can someone coming to you using the same tricks over oh, and over mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. he was already blind to mm -hmm. Who Delilah was. Mm -hmm. So as the story went on, that blindness manifested in the physical when they finally captured him and you know took away his sight. Amen. So we have to be careful of you know who we are. We have to seek God to know where we stand in the spirit so that if we're in a tough spot, we pray, get ourselves out before it manifests in the physical. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that happens usually starts in the spirit realm before it manifests in the physical. We have to be careful. Amen. Amen. Whatever we want to do, that's why prayer is important. By the time you pray and pray, once it manifests in the spirit realm, physically it will, it will come to pass. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Believers must endeavor to harness their urge by crucifying their flesh. Your flesh have to be crucified. You have to mortify this flesh. Otherwise, it will lead you to where Delilah led Samson. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it's not a pleasant place. Amen. This flesh, these eyes, that's why we have to watch, mind what we watch. Amen. Mind the music, what we listen to. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you mind what you watch, what you listen to, God will help you. God will give you the grace. Amen. Then this flesh, even when you are tempted, speak to the devil, yes. get thee behind me, Satan. He's there, he listens. By the time you speak harshly to him, he will flee. If you resist him, he will flee. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's like Eve. When the snake, the devil went to her, she ate attend her him. He was asked, she was asking. She was the devil. She, they had interaction. You can't interact with the enemy. You can't interact with the devil. By the time you start going back and forth, he will he will hypnotize you in the physical. He will hypnotize you. You don't entertain the devil. By the time the devil starts speaking, scream at the devil. Amen. He will say, ah, this one, let me look for another, let me look for another prey. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Vin, you want to say something? Yeah, just, uh, I'm going to share a, a scripture, but also no matter who you are in God and how powerful God has made you in the anointing, such as Samson being a Nazarite, we all fall for the flesh. The flesh is part of us. Yes. And when I was reading that, I remembered Paul, who was also very anointed. Mm -hmm. he, he dealt with it. Yes. 
this. But the Lord will always give you a way out of it. And if, if you don't mind, I just want to read yes, something yes, yes, that Paul, ahead. it says in Romans 7, 15, it says, I do not understand what I do. For I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is living the sin is living in me. For I know the good itself does not dwell in me. That is my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not, I do, not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I kept on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it's sin who is living in me that does it. So I find the law is at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at the work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from the body this that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That is the only way. Yes, that is the only way. It's only God that can deliver you. The devil is out there, to and fro, moving to and fro, 24-7, looking for who he may devour. Amen. Don't allow the devil. We shouldn't allow the devil. We should speak. That's why we have to occupy ourselves, occupy our mind with the word of God. Meditate on the word of God day and Amen. night. Amen. Amen. If you are meditating on the wrong things, it's like you are giving the devil away. Yes. I'm ready. Come. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is no respect of a person. And and Satan definitely is no respecter of anyone. Definitely. He hates you. Yes. And he has boldness. So don't ever think, oh, I'm this high in God, so the, the devil can't come at me. The devil was bold enough to tempt Jesus. If he could do that to him, who do you think you are? Amen. Amen. And only the word of God, even through Christ, was able to resist the devil. And that's why he fled from him. Amen. Amen. He knows that Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 Doesn't nights. Care. He's hungry, definitely. That's why he went, to tempt him with food. The devil will not tempt you with what you don't like. Amen. It's what you need at that time. That's what he will use to tempt you. Amen. It's your duty to resist him. Amen. Whatever it takes, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Continue. Our flesh must be rebuilt as is necessary in order that we might not do what he ought not to for any reason. When one does anything often, it becomes a habit and difficult to stop. Samuel was caught in the Samson. web, uh, Samson was caught in the web of lusting after women. Flirting causes troubles in the past and even more devastating in these days of various diseases that go with high-risk sexual behavior. Families are broken, wars are fought, people poisoned, and pledges overlooked intentionally. Child of God, beware and do not fall prey to these fleeting fleshly pleasures. Amen. Praise the Lord. We know what is happening all over. Sickness. All these um, sexually transmitted diseases. Most men, most women, they contact it because of their flirting around. Going where they are not supposed to. Hanging around men and women they are not supposed to hang around with. And at the end of the day, it's like a woman. If your husband comes in sick with all... That's why most homes are broken. Most homes are broken because of men and women that are unfaithful. At the end of the day, the children will suffer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even wars, all these wars, pledges, a lot of things happen. A lot of things happen with uncontrolled appetite. 
we have to control our appetites. Believers, our body, our flesh have to be put under subjection. That's why it's good to fast. Fast once in a while so that you, 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 you take care of the flesh because the flesh will always, I want this, I want this, I want that. At times, fast and tell the flesh, no, you cannot always want this food. That way you will be able to pray and pray your way to breakthrough. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Five, deception. Judges 16, 4 through 6. Samson was deceived by Delilah's cosmetic love. He was blinded by fleshly loss that he fell into the trap. Samson thought that he had found a beautiful lover and sucker. Little did he know that Delilah was a poison which later took his life. You can imagine going to get poison, going to get somebody, all in the name of beauty, cosmetics beauty, that will eventually take your life. That is terrible. Yes. It's a warning to each and every one of us. We have to take heal. All that glitters is not gold. Amen. Most men, most women, even unmarried ones, they've already made up their minds. I want a tall, handsome man. If you see a short man that is meant for you, say, no, is that tall, handsome? Is devil, demon, and you will fall for any tall, handsome demon out there. We have to be careful. Amen. We have to be careful. We have to listen to God. We have to pray. More especially when we are choosing life partners. It's very important. Most men, most women, they will want to sample before. If you sample and sample your debt, what have you benefited? Nothing. Praise Amen. the Lord. Believers should be guided by the word of God and rely on the Holy Spirit for godly relationship. Holy Spirit, that will lead you to your life partner. The Holy Spirit will direct you to the right person. But the devil will use beauty to distract you. Ah, this lady, she's beautiful. This man, oh, he's handsome. He drives a Lexus. He drives Ferrari. What has that got to do with your future, with your life? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anything or process contrary to the Bible procedure is not of God and should be avoided in all its ramifications. It is a deception of the devil. It is better to obey God than out than our fleshly lust for disobedience leads to destruction disobedience will always always lead to destru destruction disobedience will pull you down Amen. look at Saul yeah. simple disobedience that robbed him of his kingship amen. amen look at Samson he disobeyed his parents by not listening to them he fell he died Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Question four. What lessons do we learn from Samson's life? Any believer can fall. Any believer, no matter your title, you can fall. So take heed. Don't think I have a right. Amen. You can fall. Yeah, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. As believers, we have to be careful. We shouldn't be careless with our lives. Amen. We should take heed to the word of God. It should guide and guard us always. We must obey the leading of the Holy Ghost always. The Holy Spirit, we have to obey always. The Holy Spirit will direct you most of the time. The Holy Spirit will be speaking. You don't want to listen because that's not what you want to hear. Whether it's what you want to hear or not, the Holy Spirit should be your God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All clearly defined instructions in God's word must be applied to your daily living. That's our manual, the word of God. 
it has to be applied to the letter. You don't pick and choose which one you will obey and which one you will not apply to. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Disobedience to God causes humiliation and may lead to eternal damnation. Definitely. Eternal damnation awaits you and awaits whoever that is disobedient to the word of God. Humiliation too. You will even be humiliated in the first place here on earth before damnation faces you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The devil is still setting his traps today using various media. We must hold fast to do the word of God, adhere to godly counsels, and listen to the Holy Ghost for earthly success. Amen. Godly counsel. And the best place to get the godly counsel is from the pulpit. Don't feel anybody is talking to you. Even while the message is going on from the pulpit, whoever the Holy Spirit is using, it's like picking the ones that applies to him or her. Nobody has a right. Even this teaching, we know everybody, you know where you fall short. All the essence of all these teachings is to make amends. Amen. That's it. Not to, not to castigate anybody. Just make amends. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The same strategies the devil used to desire Eve, the lust of the eyes, the fleshy lust and pride of life, are still, are still real today and perhaps more sophisticated. Yes, these days it's more sophisticated with all this Facebook, all this Instagram and all whatnot, messages and all whatnot. Praise the Lord. It's more sophisticated. We have to be careful. Yes. Be more careful. We must be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Every labor, all your labor in the Lord will never go unrewarded. Amen. It will never be in vain. Amen. But every labor you labor for man, forget about it. Tomorrow, he or she will deny you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It should be realized the achievements as believers are not measured by earthly things. The life of man does not consist of the abundance of things which he possesses. Amen. Amen. It's not what you own that matters. What matters is where you will spend eternity. Amen. Look at um, the, the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus was poor, sitting by his gates. His dog licking his wound. At the end of the day, he made it to heaven. And the rich man was in hell, begging for that poor man sitting at his gate to dip his fingers in water and quench his thirst. If he had paid attention to that man, probably he would have made it to eternity. Amen? Amen. It's not what you possess here that makes you. It's where you will spend eternity. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just a quick contribution to that. Yes. The proof of that is if you look at the Egyptian tombs, all these pharaohs were buried with billions of dollars worth of gold. And three, four, five, six thousand years later, they dig them up and the gold is still there, but they're no longer there. Amen. And then people fight and steal over all the stuff that you left behind. So it, it, it really means nothing. It's not. And every one of those pharaohs right now, if they could speak, they would say, oh, I would give all that up just to be alive once more. Because Amen. it means nothing. It's garbage. It's vanity. Vanity upon vanity. Vanity is not worth it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Satan is moving about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. If anyone follows him, he takes him off the righteous life to hell at the end. We need to be sober and vigilant, therefore, to overcome or escape from him. Yes, we have to be sober. We have to be vigilant because the work of the devil is 24-7. He doesn't sleep too. He's looking for followers because he knows that his time is short. Amen. 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 All we have to do is to be vigilant spiritually. Let us not 
start sleeping spiritually. Let us be alert in the spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We ought to live and do all things as believers by faith. Anything done outside of faith is by sight and could ruin one's life. Amen. As believers, whatever we are doing is by faith. We believe that God answers prayers and we pray by faith and he answers. Amen. As believers, anything you are doing outside faith, you are wasting your time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God must be in all our daily living on earth. We should be very prayerful. We must not be forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some are. Amen. Amen. God must be in all our daily living on earth. We should be very prayerful. We have to pray in season and out of season. We must not forsake the assembling of brethren as the manner of some are. Brethren, when you get back home, go back and study this message with your family and every Bible passage, read it and meditate on it Amen. and take heed so that what happened to Samson will not happen to you, Amen. will not happen to your children, Amen. your grandchildren Amen. in the name of Jesus so that it will not happen in this ministry Amen. in the name of Jesus. It's very, very important. And what lessons do we learn from Samson's life? When you get back home, read this particular passage, you know, these particular lessons, and pick the ones you know yourself you are falling short of and make amendments. Amen. It's very important. Amen. Hallelujah. Daily living application. We have been reminded that not all that glitters that is gold. The devil is not relenting in his bid to lead many astray. But if we listen to the bidding of our loving master, we will always arrive at the shore of bliss, rejoicing in victory, having overcome the deceits and traps of the devil. God does not leave us without a way of escape from devil's strategy. If we obey him completely, we will testify. Amen. 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 We must not allow the fleeting pleasures of sin cheaply offered by the devil through sex, position, wealth, fame, title, experience, ego, etc. lead us astray. The sufferings of the present world cannot be compared with the glory that shall be revealed to us through Jesus Christ in the kingdom to come. Amen. Amen. Everything here, you cannot compare it to what awaits us if we are able to make this race to the finish line. And by God, God's grace, he will give us the grace to make it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We should therefore always look beyond this earth in all our activities. If Samson, a Nazarite, from the womb will fall, what will you say of the weak and careless ones? We must avoid the same pitfalls today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Memory verse. First Corinthians. 10 verse 12. Let's read it together. Memory verse. First Corinthians 10, 10 12. Wherefore, let him that think at his time take, take heed lest he fall. Amen. Let's read it once more with power. First Corinthians 10, 12. Wherefore, let him that think at his time take heed lest he fall. Amen. 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah.